We're gonna talk about the Diablo 4 rework. First thing we're gonna do is explain how all of the mechanics actually function so we can be all, all on the same page. After that, I'll give you sort of my take or impressions on it. So let's go ahead and go. The Diablo 4 PTR rework for itemization as well as the Helltide changes as well as the pit are all out. We have spent a little bit of time since it has been out looking at it. So this is a first impressions video on what it feels like as I'm getting that question pretty often. The first thing we will need to discuss is the affix changes on legendary items. As you know, legendary items now only have three stat lines. They have been heavily simplified. So almost all of them are just like primary stats, like strength, max life, critical strike. There's nothing anymore that's too weird. The weirdest ones are stuff like damage to close enemies, damage to distant enemies, chance to deal bonus damage, which is one of the new temporary ones, which is kind of cool. But other than that, they're much easier to understand and also calculate what it's actually doing for you. There are also new affixes. So temporary allows you to take a legendary item and add two more stat lines on it. And as you're gonna know this from this piece of gear, it has a little shiny star next to strength. That is because it has greater affixes. There are now RNG on some of the stat lines having additional massive rolls on it. And this one, for instance, hit that onto strength. So you're gonna notice if I go to the weapons here, you'll see like elemental surge, chance to deal physical damage, fire damage, etc. berserking, double swing size, whirlwind size, frenzy duration. For instance, I looked at the druid. They have this for like pulverized size. So there is other cool affixes that they have added, which are explained decently in the line. So as far as the affix sides of things go, I find myself liking the new and reworked affix types. As far as the temporary and how it actually works, you just select what you want to temper. You get manuals from basically just playing the game. They will drop from like dungeons, et cetera. And these manuals will have different affixes that you can put on there. Look, I got damage to close enemies on this one. You can add two affixes for a total basically of five total. I'll just go elemental surge and see what we get here. You can skip the animation. And we got 40% chance to deal 19,500 flat lightning damage. Now, one thing I know this is you can reroll the same one. So if I went here and did elemental surge again, there could be a chance to get lightning literally again, like just like that, you see it. But you can also see from this example that it rolled higher. So this might be so you can try to get a better roll of the same stat, but I did find it being a little annoying. You can roll the same stat just like enchanting, for instance, but not a big complaint. Now, the masterwork inside of it, for instance, I have this item right here. I've been masterworking it. Basically, it's just giving me like a 5% bump in terms of stats across the board. This one went from like 76 to 77 strength from like 860 HP to 900 HP on the second rework. And then the fourth, eighth, 12th rework, one of these stat lines will be massively increased. And if you get lucky, maybe it'll hit on the greater affix one. And that's basically how the master working goes. But you're gonna know this, I have no obdikite, obdicite, however you wanna pronounce that, okay? Because you get it from the pit. So what is the pit? Let's talk about that and show that and then show you the master working process. Okay, so you have this right here, the Porto Activator. You're gonna activate the Artificer's tier. You can basically pick which tier you want to do here. Tier six being the last one we just did, unlocked all the way to tier nine, and unlocks it depending upon basically how fast you go through this. And this will give you the rewards in order to be able to allow you to masterwork. It's gonna require one of like these rune shards, for instance. You can see here, you get these Hell Tides, Legions, Nightmare Dungeons. We're gonna talk about Hell Tides in a second because I think that's actually one of the cooler parts of the changes. So let's just try running a, I don't know, a tier five here, just so we can get through this somewhat quickly. Opens the portal, though, you log into the game here, which is now going to more or less run a greater rift. Now, I was a greater rift enjoyer in Diablo 3, so you might see some criticism that this is basically greater rifts. I like greater rifts, so for me, I think that's fine. But basically, you're gonna go into a random area here. You're gonna kill mobs. You're gonna race against the timer to beat it until it's 10 minutes. If you die, you'll get a little bit of a time penalty, and then you're going to kill a boss. The maps are fairly short, and then you're gonna go through a portal, which loads you into another random like rift here, and you're going to continue through this one until you either get to another portal or until you beat the map. All right, at the end of the map there, it's gonna give you this Guardian's Lair teleport. You're gonna click it. It's gonna warp you right in front of the path, basically of a boss, and we're going to fight one of what is more or less a dungeon boss here. So we're gonna fight the dungeon boss, Give it three, two, one here and the dude will be dead. And then you'll see the rewards you get at the end of one of these pits. So there we go, he is dead. Now we get some legendary item rewards. We pick that up. You can see we get these stones, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Open up the chest and now we get the obdicite or obdicite or however you pronounce that. 
and that is what we're going to be using for master working. All right, so last one was a tier five. This one's a tier nine, just to get more of these materials so I can show you the master working. Okay, and there's a tier 12 down, just trying to get more of these fragments here. That should just about be enough to show you the full master working. All right, so let me show you master working here. Let me move myself out of the way. So you have an item. Here's the item. You put it on here, see the stats, click upgrade. Stats will go up. This is visual glitch of the blue item. Just ignore that here. It's PTR here. All affixes increased by 5% because that was one of the normal master working. You can see the fury on kill went from six to seven, just on rank three there. Strength went up, life went up. All the stats went up just a little bit. Now I need to go get one more of these pieces to show you the tier four, like massive upgrade. All right, we got the final pieces we need. So we take the item, you plop it in there, it goes to rank four, which is going to, one of these stat lines is going to get like a giga chad buff. So basically we go here, we hit the button, bang. And which one do we get? Of course, it's gonna do a little animation, which is cool, but then here you go. A random affix has been upgraded by 25% this time. So we look at it and we see the blue one is resource generation has now had a 25% of its previous stat buff. And that is why it is blue, for instance. So there you go. That's how the master working works. Okay, so that is item affixes, temporary and master working. Now we're on, on the same page in terms of how that actually works in the game. Now let's talk about the Helltide changes because in my opinion, Helltide's what I don't like most about the game. I just don't like farming living steel, but the new Helltide actually feels significantly better. It takes a lot for me to say that. So the one thing that's improved is mob density. There's a lot more of it. You're gonna notice there's like this GTA wanted timer in the top up here. And as you are going throughout, this is going to ramp more and more and more, basically increasing the mob density. Now I'm gonna farm for a little bit cause there's some random events that happen that I'm not gonna sit here and make you wait for, but there's one in particular that's really cool. And there's also this big boss here in the middle that you can summon, sort of like the blood tide with the three pieces. So let me go do all these things and show you. Also, there does seem to be a lot more just of the random overworld events that happen during this and density does seem to be, I mean, higher during this. I'm noticing mobs are kind of spawning on top of me all of the time. And I normally just absolutely hate doing blood tide, I'll be honest, but this, it does feel a lot better. Like for instance, you see there, it says the forces of hell grow infuriated. That's like your Grand Theft Auto star. I just gained another star, basically. Mobs are gonna keep coming out of the ground like more and more and more, etc. Okay, there it is. There's the cool worm, look at this. So this big worm like shows up out of the ground and just belches out a ton of dudes. Happens kind of randomly, but I've had it happen like back to back, which is probably the coolest thing I've seen in the game in a long time. It's completely new. Just this huge worm comes out of the ground and just shits out a ton of these guys. The first time I was happening, I was like, oh man, that's really cool. Also, while I'm waiting on the next Helltide to spawn to show you here, I want to show you one other thing that I, I do rather like, which is there is now a far and standard camera option. So this is what it looks like normally. You see right here, we can barely see this Galavine at the bottom here. And if I go here and I turn on the far camera and then we go back, you can see the Galavine is now fully out. So you can kind of see the difference in terms of how close we are zoomed in. And once again, let me show you this difference here. There you go. So that's about the difference. Your character definitely is a little bit smaller. It is noticeable when you get in combat. So I like that. It'd be nice if it was even a little further out, but you know, I'll take what I can get. Also, when an item drops with an affix, you can see it on the gray uh, there on the ground. It shows you the greater affix. It has one greater affix. So that is an easier way to identify it. So this is the ritual. And I mean, the mob density, that that's a lot better. I mean, that's a lot like the blood type, right? But the blood lures, brings them in, you get a whole bunch of dudes. At least to me, it feels a lot better. I, like the blood, I like the blood tide, and now it basically just feels like hell tide is basically the blood tide. You don't have the chest to open with the keys, but you have basically the seekers, you have more vents, you have the blood lures now, which are basically the hearts that you get from the chest. And then we have a boss here, the blood maiden and people can help you summon these. And I'm noticing that the minions that summon on top of you every now and then seem to summon for everybody. So if you have a bunch of people like stacked on top, you're just getting like a significant amount of minions consistently spawning. All right, and let's see if we can kill the boss here. And then you can see black and femur drops. You can get some more boss pieces. I'm noticing that like living steel or distilled, like just random boss pieces tend to drop a little bit now. Oh, here's more and okay, that's gonna actually be a problem. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like the blood seeker dudes spawning. There we go, boss down. 
a whole bunch of loot. And we got an exquisite blood, one of those, some legendaries, etc. Alright, there you go. So that is the new hell type, basically, which definitely feels better than it used to. And you see, the, yeah, here we go. More dudes are spawning, etc. So the, the density is definitely up. Well, I just used salvage all items, thinking it would do rares, and it actually salvages all legendaries also. So that happened. Uh, including my masterworked items. So if that is something that carries over into the normal realm, be careful. Okay, so let's talk about how I feel about it. The items feel better, for sure. I mean, the affixes are definitely better. The hell tide's a big improvement. I actually liked Greater Rift, so for me, adding a Greater Rift system seems fine to the game. It feels to me like, basically, it's the 1.0 of Diablo 4. It feels like it's a decent base system that now can be built upon. What you're going to see is people are going to say things like it feels the same uh, in terms of the gameplay. The core gameplay has not changed. You're going to be doing the same gameplay loops, which is you're going to be killing the same type of monsters with the same types of builds you have, doing the same skills and roughly completing things in around the same amount of time. So if you're wondering, is Diablo 4 a completely different experience when you log in? Are you going to be having a totally new time? No, but they have rehoned down the base. So for me, it feels like, okay, this is now what we have a completed base of a game can be built upon from there. And the the cracks that were sort of there are, are being filled in to a portion. So I actually quite like the changes. I think they're pretty good. I'm gonna use an old term here of a step in the right direction. And uh, as content gets added in the game, I'm sure the game will continue to get better from that point. So. That's just how I feel about it. I think it's pretty decent. I think obviously for me, the answer in terms of like, there's gonna be people asking, should I log in and try it, et cetera? I think ARPGs are the type of thing that you log in, you play whatever season and whatever game until you basically get bored of that season and then you go play the other game. If you're someone happy playing Last Epoch right now and you're curious about season four, I would say try out season four, see what you think. When you get bored, quit. It's not a religion, you don't have to convert. You can just try a season when it comes out, see what you think about the itemization. I think it's basically, however, and my my take of it is that it's basically the the base of the game is a little bit more solid now and they will continue to build on it from there. That's just how I feel about it. Mostly positive, nothing like completely groundbreaking in terms of like, it's a totally new game or something. Same game, more smoothed out. That's my take. All right, see you on the next video.